Making news this week, never forget, families and friends of missing persons gather to remember their loved ones. Cancer Council beefs up their beating cancer campaign as Daffodil Day edges closer. And WA firefighters heads to Canada to battle bushfires. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniskov. Good evening. The atmosphere is filled with hope of finding those who are missing in Western Australia as the state marks Missing Persons Week. A group of families and friends gathered in Mandra to spread messages of hope. Kirif Taplin reports. A small service was held in Mandra this week to remember those who have gone missing in Western Australia. The service is a vital part of Missing Persons Week in WA where police are still trying to gather information about people who have disappeared without explanation. Friends and family of the missing gathered near Mandra City Town Hall for 20 minutes to remember their lost loved ones. The rainfall did not deter the number of people in attendance. Abduction victim Susie Gilmore and the mother of missing girl Margaret Dodd also attended. Both encouraged families to remain hopeful that the truth will be revealed. Hope is really all that any of us have to cling to and it what gets us through every day. It what makes us get up in the morning and it makes us keep hoping that someday these people will be found. It's a big comfort to each other to know that we're all uh, experience a similar fate but we can still smile at the end of the day. Police have relaunched fresh appeals throughout the week on Facebook to look for those who are still missing. If you have any information regarding any missing person in WA, contact Crime Stoppers. Kira Tappen, WM News. If you think you are too healthy to get cancer, think again. More than 100 Australians are killed by the deadly disease each day. The Cancer Council plans to raise $800,000 in this month's Daffodil Day to prevent further deaths. Ali Harper has the report. A shocking 350 Australians are diagnosed with cancer every day, devastating the lives of individuals and their families. Greg Tuchek is one of them. He was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in June 2010. First off I had a uh, cyst on my neck, which wasn't cancer related, but when they did the ultrasound for the cyst, it showed that the thyroid was twice the size that it should be, so they did a biopsy of that and it came back cancerous. After undergoing a radical neck dissection to remove his thyroid and 23 lymph nodes, Greg endured a round of radiation therapy. I'm not fully in remission, but um, uh, everything's moving in the right direction. Daffodil Day, falling on August 22nd, gives hope for a brighter, cancer-free future by raising funds for cancer research, prevention and support services. With ongoing funding, cancer researchers can continue to discover new and better treatments. Cancer prevention programs will remain effective and a high level of support can be maintained for cancer sufferers. Yes, I'll be supporting Daffodil Day. I'm going to buy a pen, um, always handy at work, and it's all money to a good cause. Every dollar raised brings us another step closer to the defeat of cancer. Ali Harper, WAMN News. Perth's future stars of music came together under one roof this week for the annual Music Makers Opera performance. While the students showcased their talents in front of an audience of 800 in St Mary's Cathedral. Daniel Edwards and Darren McLean together filed this story. Students of the WAPA performed in the St Mary's Cathedral this week. We visited their rehearsal session. The program included compositions by Handel, Elga, Bruckner and Beeble. It was conducted by music director Kristen Battelle. This year we're joined by the winds, the brass and the percussion of, um, of the WA Academy of Performing Arts, um, as well as you can see the whole choral department, there's about 80 of them. Accompanying the talented students via the cathedral's 104 year old organ was WAPA's coordinator of classical music, Stuart Smith. A major highlight of the performance was WAPA graduate, Caitlin Cassidy. Caitlin will soon be heading to Manus College in New York where she'll undertake a professional studies diploma. Meanwhile, Mr Patel said he's excited about the other future performance for the up and coming months. Uh, the next big performance for the, uh, the vocal department at WAPA will be the opera, which is um, Humperdinck's Hansel and Gretel, which is a fantastic family show which everybody can enjoy. And that's happening in just a couple of months time. Darren McElane, WAMN News. 
Affordable housing in Perth has reached a major milestone with state government marking the 16,000th opportunity under the Affordable Housing Strategy 2010 to 2020. Housing Minister Bill Marmion toured the 38-unit social housing project in Coolbala this week. It was built under Access Housing, Australia's community housing agreement with the government. I think that the fact we've uh, dropped the waiting list down by 4,000 people in and in about two years is a pretty good achievement and that's what we're working on. It's the incident that demonstrated the best of Perth, people power that is. A Perth man was pulled to safety after commuters tilted a train away from the platform, freeing his leg after it became trapped in the gap. CCTV footage emerged online showing passengers on the platform together pushing the train to widen the gap in an effort to free the men. Public Transport Authority spokesman David Hines said the train driver was alerted and the passengers alighted to assist. The man did not sustain serious injuries and was not admitted to hospital. To world news, a national memorial service was held in Melbourne for the MH17 victims. Prime Minister Tony Abbott, Governor General Peter Cosgrove and opposition leader Bill Shorten attended the service. The Australian flag was flying at half-mast to honour the 38 Australians killed in the crash. We grieve for all of them, but particularly for the 38 who called Australia home. Today, we will remember them and we will honour them. WA firefighters will be deployed to British Columbia in Canada to battle widespread bushfires. Five fire managers will leave WA this Sunday as part of the Australian New Zealand contingent team. The fires, one at Mount McAllister and the other at Chellasley River, have burned 198,000 hectares in the past few weeks. The Canadian state of Alberta has celebrated its 41st Heritage Day, recognising multiculturalism. It was free admission for Fort Calgary that day. Exclusive fun activities including scavenger hunt, where people have to hunt 12 characters for the word elbow in backfoot language. There were concerts at the Heritage Park to mark the end of the event. And here's Carly Samata with this week's top stories in science. Thanks Evan and Danielle, and welcome to science. It's been three years since the catastrophic Fukushima nuclear disaster and the devastating effects continue to be felt by hundreds of thousands of people. Mr Naoto Khan was the Japanese Prime Minister when the nuclear reactor crisis began and he no longer supports nuclear power. Mr. Cam will be touring Australia to share his reflections on Fukushima, advocate for renewable energy and highlight concerns about Australia's uranium trade. For anyone interested in Australia's energy future who would like to attend the talks, a list of Perth's media opportunities have been posted on the Conservation Council's website. Senator Simon Birmingham has revealed a bold new plan to eradicate feral cats from Christmas Island. The Senator said that feral cats are devastating Christmas Island's wildlife and the island can't afford to lose any more of its native species. The plan will take a number of years with funding from various partners in a collaborative effort to remove the predators. The plan involves a new baiting technique to be trialled on Christmas Island's rainforest areas. There are new hopes for the survival of WA's rarest bird. Seven critically endangered western ground parrots were transferred to Perth Zoo in hopes they may breed. Environmental Minister Albert Jacob said it's estimated that there are fewer than 140 western ground parrots remaining in the wild, meaning captive breeding may be the key to their survival. State government funding to begin the captive breeding program has been supplemented by a $15,000 grant from volunteer-run group Friends of the Western Ground Parrot. And that's science. Thank you, Carly. And that's how Perth looks this week. For the latest news, please hop onto our website. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Have a great week. Good night. Mm -hmm.